118 members of the patrol force who receive SIT training and are specially skilled for dealing with folks in crisis. With de-escalation techniques, the goal of 25% of the patrol force being SIT trained. The challenge is to find ways to safely subdue individuals who are resisting the lawful orders of our police officers. Less lethal weapon systems that we reviewed, pepper ball technology, a pepper spray field balls delivery system, the Pixon JPX, a handheld pepper spray delivery system, the FN Crystal Group Impact and Chemical Agent Projection System, the Advanced Weapons Technology Super Talon, the handheld projector of a Kevlar nylon mess net. The California Highway Patrol they began looking at their electronic control weapons in 2007 and you had 27 incidents of the use of deadly force. And in 2010, you had 13, a 51% reduction. We are presenting that we provide this weapon system to a small cadre of officers, best trained and apt to use this weapon system based upon the incredible training that they're receiving. A person in crisis slashed at a co-worker and then began to walk along the Embarcadero. The officers afforded the person time and distance to have the person not further harm anybody, but when the suspect got closer to what the officers believed he was going to end up in a populated area, the suspect lunged at the officer. And the only option the officer had was a firearm. I felt it my duty to at least find out what this current commission's thoughts were, what the community's feeling was. To use that one man's death as a vehicle to do a PR campaign, to limit the scope of the tasers, still implement the tasers, and then maybe later have the scope be for everybody, a very clever way, bringing tasers into San Francisco, which has been vehemently resisted. The guy himself marked in a wheelchair. The officers approached him, he pulled a knife, the officers had no other form. The Billy Club of the 40. Will there be officers who will abuse it without question? LAPD, three officers being fired for taking a woman in handcuffs. I've seen the city change so much so fast, especially this neighborhood, Western Edition. At least people knew each other. Tasers, nothing replaces people knowing people and helping each other. Why did you go to the CHP? Would it have been a problem to use your own data to show use of force? Yes, we, we, we keep a record of the use of force. You became chief of police in the middle of a police corruption scandal with the hundreds and hundreds of cases dismissed based on police officers lying, signing reports, misrepresenting what they were doing. There was an investigation underway at the federal building. You have the police coming to the table with unclean hands asking for tasers but no one has been held accountable to felony perjury charges against police officers. Amnesty International, they call using the taser, torturing 50,000 votes. Have any of y'all ever got tased before? Yes. How did it feel? Very painful. So why would you want to do it to another human being? Because it's better than shooting them. When you was describing actually dealing with people and talking them down, de-escalating, wouldn't that be enough? If you can be more patient, wake them out, instead of that, pulling that the taser. That has been the case in every case except for one. I am afraid a taser would be disproportionately used against African Americans. The department's draft on ECW does not address the following. The medical risks associated with tasers does not identify those populations who are at increased risk of injury or death from ECW, including persons of small stature and slight build, children and small adults, persons with cardiovascular disease or heart conditions, elderly persons, pregnant women, persons in mental medical crises, and persons under the influence of drugs or alcohol. When the taser is used in a punitive or abusive manner. We will make sure that they're incorporated in the order. Is this new training and procedure in place for 911 to actually identify mental health crisis calls and dispatch CIT officers to the scene? Five 911 dispatchers have been through our CIT training. The CIT is something that if it was without extra weaponry, it would be something I would be really, really proud of San Francisco for. If the CIT was working with very highly trained, sensitive people tuned into de-escalating situations that are called non-lethal or less lethal, they are lethal in many instances around the country. We know that.
Officer Grant, it was a situation where supposedly he thought he was grabbing his taser. It would be disproportionately used against poor people, homeless people. We rely on the police. We call them to these situations. That's why the CIT, without any additional weaponry, is a wonderful thing if it's really genuinely regarded. There have been many other edge weapon situations over the course of the near last two years where we haven't used anything. We've just talked them out of it. I really support that. It's easy for members of the public to be confused about how dangerous tasers really are. Taser International has spent a lot of money to control public knowledge about tasers. Dr. Zeron Sang, a cardiologist at UCSF, told reporters that after he published his findings about the dangers of tasers, representatives of the taser company urged him to reconsider and even offered to fund his future research. San Francisco 49ers are likely to winning the Super Bowl. A repeat performance of the Giants in victory. You open up the front page and there's some guy with a piece of metal cramming the windows in on the Union bus. A taser could have stopped that situation. There were several cases cited here tonight of officer-involved shootings and use of force incidents. Randall Dunklin, the man in the wheelchair south of Market, was seeking mental health assistance and went into crisis mode, proceeded to go down the street with a very small knife that he was attempting to drop when he was shot multiple times. Eight out of ten taserings are of people with mental health difficulties. Crisis intervention teams and nonviolent de-escalation, it's been on the table for several years. Why has that program not been fully implemented and why is the public not then allowed to assess the success of that program prior to even thinking about authorizing the force to use a new weapon? Thank you. Uh, uh, That's very good. Lawsuits over tasers have happened Conservatively, $10 million in damage in, since 2009 in California alone. Taser International has thrown its liability on the POA and San Francisco Police Department, and that then goes onto the general fund, onto the taxpayers of San Francisco, because when there are police uh, abuse-related lawsuits, that's who ultimately winds up paying. Is the POA or the San Francisco Police Department willing to pay the cost, as opposed to the taxpayers of San Francisco? Did you come across any liabilities specifically that the city has incurred thus far? You're referring to the Sheriff's Department? Yes. I can absolutely uh, present it. Okay. Until you can show me that you've got 25 to 50 percent of the police force CIT trained, we don't need to talk about any additional force. Let's have people talking down more. What are the mental health ramifications for being tasered? The absolute terror of being threatened at gunpoint that I experienced made me want to bring that up here. We really need a more detailed analysis and, and study specific to this department as to why tasers are needed and the situations in which they would be used. The CHP statistics, that was too attenuated to be able to draw a direct correlation between decrease in deadly use of force by the CHP with increase of tasers. Tasers only have a useful life of about five years. Tasers have a 25% like incidence of not deploying properly, which also costs money. A variety of people from class backgrounds, race backgrounds, many different neighborhoods represented, several different community-based organizations, all very concerned about the proposal to arm CIT officers with tasers. Um, to get the officers who sign up to have that prestigious role, so they're seen as people who are on this prestigious team, it goes so much farther than the training. The crisis intervention team is really about having a team, having the proper 911 responses, the supervisor on site, that constant review, organizing ahead of time about how people are going to respond. We want safer police officers, situations where people who are being apprehended by the police aren't getting hurt either. And I think we all honestly share those goals. I hope we can get there by fully implementing CIT instead of using tasers. We would like to solicit more of your input. Monday, February 4th, Scottish Rights Center. February 11th, the Bayview Opera House.